Hello, welcome to this webinar about Cassandra Realtime. Um, my name is Obi Omanunachi. I work with Anant Corporation doing um, business platform development. Um, today we're going to talk about Cassandra Realtime, um, which is a sort of tool for or a demonstration of integration between Kafka for its data streaming and Cassandra and Spark. Um, so the way we're going to go over this is first we're going to talk about what is streaming data or real time, um, why you might want to use it, and then an overview of this project generally, Cassandra real time, followed by a more specific uh, walkthrough of what we call flow one, um, but it's a setup including several different open source technologies. Um, so first of all, what is streaming data? So streaming is a term from using, from Apache Kafka. Um, in Kafka, a stream is a continuous flow of data. In normal operation, Kafka just receives individual messages, um, which it stores in topics and can then publish them to any programs or applications that are listening to those topics. Uh, with streams, your data flows in um, so rather than requesting a record in a new message, um, you receive it whenever it comes in. And then the power of that is that Kafka's stream API allows you to process those streams. Um, so each record that as it comes in uh, without batching in real time. The reason why we want to combine this streaming into our business platform, um, well, first you need to have some sort of data management, data manipulation in your business platform um, just to make it run and serve your customers properly. Um, and we want that data to be coming in and out and going to where it needs to be as smoothly as, and quickly as it possibly can. And we also want the final location where your process data ends up to be as secure and reliable as it can be. Um, and then also you want your entire system to be able to scale so distributed technologies are in high demand. Um, in this case, we use Kafka for bringing in our data um, because Apache Kafka is a distributed, scalable, um, open source tool and it allows stream processing. Whereas we use Cassandra for our long-term storage because it's reliable, it's also distributed and decentralized and scalable, um, but it does not natively allow stream processing. So if you have streams of data or things you want to treat as streams of data, you can't just use Cassandra for the job. Cassandra Realtime, the project we're going to talk about today, is a set of sort of example processes um, that cover the intake, the processing, and storage of data, similar to what would be necessary if you were building your own like business customer service platform from scratch. Um, specifically, it so showcases the connections between several other available open source tools, um, including Apache Kafka and Cassandra but also including Flink and Spark, which are other open source data management tools um, that have their own special characteristics like how Kafka um, allows streaming. Spark is very good for other types of data processing, including machine learning. Um, and the reason we wanna do this is because some of these tools can act as streaming data producers consumers or transformers. Um, and then some of them also have other specific characteristics that we want that might include easy visualization or API production. So we're going into our overview of what we call flow one. Um, essentially, Cassandra.realtime is made up of a bunch of different types of these flows um, where we use the various tools to showcase how data comes in, how it can be managed and transformed and stored. Um, in this case, we start on our terminal, um, sending a curl request, and then everything else is contained inside a number of Docker containers. Um, 
So first, there is a Python Flask API, um, which has access to a file containing the data. When it receives that curl request, the data is then sent as a JSON message into our Kafka cluster. Specifically, there are two topics here um, that will be receiving this data as a message. Those are cp-kafka and akhq. The others are all for other management of data. Um, so the zookeeper and the schema registry are Kafka native and the Kafka data stacks connector is exactly what it says. Uh, it allows us to connect data stacks enterprise, um, which is the box over to the right, which contains Apache Cassandra and Apache Spark. The Kafka data stacks connector is the connection directly between the Cassandra, Apache Cassandra instance and the Kafka instance. Whereas the other connection between them is mediated by a Spark job in Apache Spark that receives data from the Kafka cluster and writes it into a Cassandra table. In this case, there are two separate Cassandra tables um, that contain duplicates of the same data, um, but this is not necessarily the case. So like I said, um, it involves a REST API, a Kafka cluster with several topics inside and an instance of Datastax Enterprise, which contains Apache Spark as well as Apache Cassandra. The data starts off in a file that the REST API has access to, and it will then send that message in JSON format to the Kafka topics when it receives a curl request. A Spark job exists on the Datastax Enterprise to consume Kafka messages from one of the topics and write it to a Cassandra table. And then the Kafka data stacks connector consumes the other topic and directly writes messages to a Cassandra table. So I don't have a live demo for you today just because of the setup time and some of the parts also take a long time to run. Um, but we'll be going through generally how you might use this program um, as an example. The first step that you would want to take when you're working with our code or um, really anything that uses the Kafka data stacks connector is to download the Kafka data stacks connector, um, which comes in a jar file, which you have to place with your other um, files for the project. The only other step um, for the basic setup here is to run Docker Compose up because we have all of our other docking containers that need to come up for this project inside that file. Um, those Docker containers include an instance of Datastax Enterprise, which like we said, contains Apache Cassandra and Apache Spark, a container with the Python Flask app inside, and then five containers that make up a Kafka cluster. Um, there are the required Kafka pieces, the schema registry and the zookeeper, the two topics, and then the connector. Um, and the image you can see, images you can see over to the right, the top one is just the um, file system of our project with the Kafka connector inside. Um, and then the start of the process that you get when you bring up the Docker containers. Um, as you can see, there's a bunch of like setup uh, lines that auto run after that. Um, and that continues off the bottom of the screen for a little while. And that's why we're not, that's part of why we're not doing a demo today. Um, just because it takes a long time to get set up. Once all your Docker containers are up and running, um, you want to create Kafka topics. Um, so they have containers already, but the actual topics in the cluster still need to be created. Um, so that's the next step. You create one, then the other, and then check that they're both there. You will set up a schema for the messages you're going to be sending. And then you need to create the Cassandra key space and both the tables in advance. Next, you need to start running the Spark job. Um, and you can then check that it is in fact running at the um, Spark UI that is part of Datastax Enterprise. Then you need to configure the Datastax Enterprise Kafka connector 
um, make sure that's set up properly. And then you can start triggering messages to be sent um, by sending your curl requests to the REST API as we do in the bottom of this picture here. Then uh, you want to check inside the Kafka topics to make sure that your messages from the REST API are getting into Kafka. And you want to check the Cassandra tables to make sure the records are there. As you can see, uh, we have our messages showing up in both, both of the Kafka topics as well as both of the Cassandra tables. Um, and that is how you know that flow one has been set up correctly. Um, so while this is a sort of simple example that's just sending the same data over and over again, you can see how this would be useful um, if you had streaming um, say streaming transactions in from your website into your final Cassandra table um, or some other basically business platform set up that requires both streaming data and reliable storage. Um, that's the end of my presentation for today. If you would like to work with us at a non-corporation, -corp uh, feel free to contact us or if you would like to learn more about anything mentioned today. Uh, so, any questions? Okay, uh, thank you for watching. This has been Obi Olanamanachi with Not Corporation. Um, see you next time.